Before the show begins, we offer our condolences to the families and friends of Mr. Robin Williams, who recently passed away this Monday. He has been a great inspiration to many and gave us many laughs and memories throughout his years. He will be deeply missed by many. Rest in peace, our dear poet. Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation, where the World Wide Web and real life world collide and brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze! And the thang. You did it right. Or at least your way. Anyway, welcome back to the Blaze. To Blaze on Nation. This is episode 16, recorded on August the 9th, 2014. And I, I think we've had a month since the last episode, I'm pretty sure. But, um, yeah, let's get the next thing on the road then, shall we? Because, of course, we have Thing with us. Hello there. Sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. I forget if that was actually me clicking in that bumper or if that was you, but I feel like I've heard it before. But anyways, so we're into our months, I suppose. What's been going on in your month thing? Well, um... Last month, I took a trip to Minnesota from the 10th all the way to the 18th. Had a really great time. Went fishing, got some sunlight, went outside and enjoyed um, the park. I climbed an observation tower, got a great view, took a lot of pictures. Tried to go on the touch the ground Indian trail, if that makes any sense. And within the first 30 seconds, we decided not to go because we got swarmed with a bunch of blood-hungry insects. So um, there was the Monday during that day. It was windy. We didn't go fishing that time. We spent most of our day inside watching Mystery Science Theater. For those of you who know what that is, I Wait, applaud you. What, what was this? Uh, M Mystery Science Theater. It's, uh... Never heard of it. Okay, well, you, obviously you didn't know that. <laughs> so, anyway, um... Yep, everything's been going fine. We've had a lot... We've had some new co-workers actually hired at my job, and it was very nice to meet them. So, that's good. Getting some little acquaintance with that. And... I think that's pretty much it. Oh, wait, I also got an Xbox One a couple of weekends ago, and I think the first thing I did on the Xbox was actually watch Netflix, so I didn't actually play any big games because all of those are coming out uh, the fourth quarter. There's going to be a ton of games, and if you would like to add me on Xbox Live, then my gamer tag is the Palkinator. I'm not sure if anybody knows how to spell that, but it's P A L K A and then Nator. And there's a there's a space in between those two words. So um other than that, everything has been uh going swimmingly. Swimmingly. I haven't been swimming for a couple of days now. And recently I've been caught by my friend Cheddarface, who's wondered how many t Oh! And I just scrolled up. Yeah, that is from today. Um, wondering about how many times I've tried the hunting party, listening party. Which I've tried a couple of times now and keep on failing. Except for tonight, it's not the listening party, it's just the darn stream still had the title of such. And I'm not sure whether the XSplit developers are sober tonight, but the stream keeps on going offline and then going back up. 
So that's why there's all these tweets going out about that. So my apologies. But as for my month, we unfortunately did not get to go camping. However, uh, last weekend we had our monthly shoot, which I talked a little bit about on my latest Blazy Log, which is up on my channel. And I got a cut in the card, which got me six points in the regular match for Tomahawk. And I also got first place in, um, what's the other match? Oh yeah, 50 yard bench rest. Although in the aggregate, I did not place, but probably because the other round I got about first place, but neither one I beat my brother, so I'm happy. <laughs> and unfortunately, I haven't gotten to, um, do this podcast as frequently, which I've noticed that it's not been so frequent as I imagined it to be this summer, which I imagined it being weekly, but I haven't been able to keep up with that, and after all, I'm not paid for this. If you give me money, however, I could probably stick to that idea more um, focused-wise, but what can you do? when you're not making money off of this stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to not sound like a money grabber. And then... Hmm. And then I moved my Blazy Log series to just weekly, which that's actually saved me a lot of time and sanity. And it's allowed me to work on other series, which my, this new one I finally started up and I hope that goes well. And I've recently celebrated having over 50 subscribers. So thank all of you for your support. It, it means a lot that you people actually find my content enjoyable. And even um, yesterday, one of my friend, um, Kay Corbeard, one of his friends, said that to him, I'm famous. And I'm just thinking... Wow. I'm actually that cool to somebody. And that... That made me, my heart warm. But... And I can see Mr. Thing scurrying through the show notes here. But anyway, and then... <laughs> in most recent news that I can remember... Aside from all my YouTubing stuff and the podcast and getting more affiliate links, which I... Th Actually, I don't think I've been spending much time on that now and failed attempts at a listening party. Today, me and Thang got to experience something very interesting. And I'm sorry if you hate that I'm bringing this up, but if anyone has heard of Opium Pulses, which is... A UK based, or at least the founders are in the UK. Um, today in their chat room for shout their, out, huh? Shout out <laughs> <laughs> in their giveaway chat room, and I thought you were saying shut up, and I'm thinking, is this a throwback to what you were saying to that <laughs> one guy? But anyway, we had this guy, and a big shout out to you, sir, dude with dude, <laughs> who decided to be, no offense meant, but totally stubborn, and although I guess the, I guess the only thing that he really, um, uh, under, not understood, but obeyed from Myself, you, and Inaka, which is the, or Inaka, I'm not sure how he pronounces it, but I think the only thing that he really obeyed out of us three moderators is when you told him to shut up and play Minecraft. <laughs> and next yeah. thing we know, he's playing Minecraft, and then you left for, um trying to restore your mental state yeah he said 
breaking point. I almost went off my breaking point. And then I and then exercised for 20 minutes to half an hour listening to rock music, and it felt satisfying. So I was mentally refreshed after I exercised, which is good. I recommend that everybody do that. I almost kind of questioned you saying mentally disturbed, though, because that's the same thing you said about Elliot Roger, and I know he's far worse than you are. Of course. I, I don't have the mentality that, to, to, let's just say, think people deserve a better place because they don't, because I didn't deserve what I'm supposed to deserve. I don't yeah, feel entitled. And, and I almost feel guilty now for even making it seem like I'm making a comparison. Yeah, well, well, here's the thing. I had the mentality to actually maybe want to smash his head into his monitor, but I didn't have the mentality to go out and do something terrible. I mean, if I could just reach my hand through mine or say, hey, pal, wake up, and then give him two smacks on the cheek, that would have been okay. But I don't have the mental capacity to go out and just waste lives away in the world. That's not who I am. Uh, admittedly, so there are some people who I'd love to do that to, but unfortunately, there's my morality... And of yeah, and then uh, of course the part that I am religious, so that's another factor that keeps me from doing it. And then also the law, because if I beat the crap out of a person that is really getting on my nerves, then I'm gonna be charged. Not to mention I've broken moral rules. But aside from that oh yeah shout out to all of you in the chat room ron kaoli and zeothermic shout out to you guys I i'm gonna do it like hodge josh now just call out the people in the chat room because you people actually use your time that you have that you could be using for something more important than this very podcast to be here with us, wasting your time with us while we um, waste our time on it. Not, not, no, we're not wasting our time. You're wasting your time with us. <laughs> so thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you for <laughs> wasting your time with us. We thank you. <laughs> anyway. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's Raiden. Yeah, as you know, Theramik just said he's Raiden. So at least, at least we. Raiden. Are you calling Raiden a guy? That's Jax. Uh, I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea what anybody's gender is until they tell me. I apologize if I got your gender wrong. It's almost ten o'clock, and I'm doing a podcast. So Th that's always your excuse. It's ten o'clock. Uh, yes, it is. It always is. It's not even ten o'clock. It's six minutes to ten o'clock. Okay, five to ten. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Six to ten. According to my Six computer, to anyway. Anyway. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright, so, in the rundown this week, we have the Zimbabwe president saying no to whites. That's us Caucasians. Well, not us, but the ones in Africa. I mean, in Zimbabwe. He's saying no to them owning land. We have Rob Ford being faced with more accusations claiming that he's homophobic. We have... Or do you want to do the last three? Uh, Alright, so... And remember, have, just give um, the um, glimpse of it. A glimpse of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get into details yet. I've learned from previous podcasts. So the third one involves the the new content ID esque, and I put that in quotes, uh, system after a possible rumor that uh, what was it? Go uh, Actually, it's been confirmed. So it was. So YouTube did buy. 
Yep. Twitch for a billion dollars. Okay, yep. so that clears that up. And it's a, I guess it's about the whole copyrighted music thing, and it pretty much just focuses on that. And the next one involves kids and guns, which, which from my perspective, things, um, quote, quote unquote here, children as young as four learn to handle guns. It is a long-held, fiercely defended cultural tradition. So that could be kind of interesting. And then the last one that we have is about courage campaigns for for Snowden and that involves Edward Snowden the guy who was responsible for revealing information that the NSA I think was one of the groups um, who exposed all of like our phone records and such as and now he's being now he's resided in Russia and that talks about like his how long he's going to stay there so that's the rundown. And now, digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? All right. So first, we have Mr. President Zimbabwe edition saying no to. Well, we said that in the rundown, didn't we? So what do you think of this? Since you were having your opinion de uh, developed or prepared on it. Well, um, I actually did not prepare anything on a Microsoft Word spreadsheet, so this is going to be on the fly. Well, we all know that throughout history, people who have a different skin color other than white men were considered slaves, and it was lasted for a very, very long time. And to our current generation, it still is a huge thing that people talk about and I really think that uh, the fact that he says no to whites owning land is, I mean, it's a possible solution, but it's not, not the best one. I think what we need to do is we need to have the people, the people in Africa and those who are white color, pretty much everybody, all colors of, of you know, different people, to just put aside their differences of of prejudice and not resort to violence, because I think that's the that was pretty much the only way. Where and I quote here, it says that um, the number of whites in Zimbabwe has decreased steadily since the 1970s, when around 300,000 lived there. It says they when they migrated to what was the Rhodesia in the 1890s held a majority Arab land in the area. And now they're saying there's only about 30,000 whites living in the country. And according to the Br British Broadcasting Corporation, I'm not sure if I said that right, between 100 and 150 white farmers. So I don't... Th so saying that no to the whites only land is not the best solution to this problem. But I think it's because these people have been so influenced by the history of of blacks and then whites treating them as slaves is kind of hard to make that decision. You know, it's it's all about like if you're raising your kid, there's a song in South Pacific called You've Got to Be Carefully Taught, which you learn from your parents not to you know, be afraid of the people who are different and whose eyes are oddly made, skin's a different shade, that sort of thing. And I think that just builds upon the person who they are. Personally, I'm not the person who wants prejudice to exist, but it does. And there are some things to this day that we are trying to make work in every single angle possible. But it just might not, it just might not be successful yet. And I think what we need to do is we need to cooperate with each other, stop the prejudice, stop the violence, stop the hate speech, and just focus on promoting world peace and goodwill toward men. But the world isn't perfect. But at least some of us have the potential 
to spread the news around and make people feel better in their lives today. Yeah, my, my whole issue with the prejudice is, and I talked about it on our pre-show, that there's a lot of back and forth going on, and namely one of the things I noticed a lot is between homophobia and um, between the people that are, I guess, namely the homophobic community or whatever. I don't know. And then the um, LGBT, the whole back and forth there that um, getting rid of homophobia, which of course then there's the, the whole thing too is there's a whole part of freedom of speech and belief and everything, which it, it is a constitutional right and everything, but it does suck that there is that there are people out there who are who will refuse to set aside differences that people cannot control or or even some of them like I saw this video um by Mr. Repsion and he's commenting on this video by this um woman um anyway this person named Trisha who is naming homosexual yeah homosexuality as a choice well deeming it as a choice I should say and then that kind of screws things around a lot cuz it, it's it's like a mental disorder in a way, but yet it's not a disorder, because it is, both are sort of similar in the way that it's just a different wiring of the brain, mm -hmm. however, it's not even classified as a disorder, because of course a disorder is around how you interact with others, how you learn, etc., mm -hmm. as with stuff like homosexuality, bisexuality, etc. That all has to do with sexual attraction and so there's also the hormones involved and it's the same it's the same with straight people. We're programmed to be attracted to the same sex and before I go any more off well it's it's sort of on topic but yet it's also off topic because this is to do with Racism more so, which is what I kind of found interesting, because, of course, back then, there is a whole... Back then, we didn't... Us Caucasians did not treat African Americans like humans. Now, most of us do, and unfortunately, there's still quite a few people out there who will still hold their views of black people, but then I, I'm I'm just not sure that this is even the and like you said I don't think it's the right way to go what things on the whole white people owning land and I'm not even sure what the problem might be with. Um, white people owning land in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. but, and I suppose that might even be the biggest source of where this whole story is coming from. So yeah, I, I think that's got to be at least some big part in this, is why are they saying no to whites? Are white are the whites treating the blacks poorly or something? And I, I guess this uh, has been going on since he had taken power, as I'm reading here. Um, or maybe not so much. I'm not too sure now, but 
I, I find this very confusing because, of course, again, I'm not sure what the source of it is, but it's definitely not the right way to go through with this. Because that's just um, throwing racism back. Yeah, because Which, in 2000 he said, um, and I quote here, he used more hostile language in reference to the whites who he said were part of an evil alliance. So at the same time, as much as we are racist to blacks, they are racist back to us, but not everybody is racist. I mean, you have the whole thing with the internet and a lot of jokes are on the internet and you shouldn't take those the stuff on the internet seriously cuz that'll just get worse but the whole evil alliance thing is definitely a stereotype that has been aimed toward most of the white farmers and that was only 14 years ago but it still mentioned uh that fact in that article today mhm mm and of course, we all know the whole racism thing just doesn't work. And it, it, it this just completely boggles my mind because I'm wondering what's going to happen to the wages now. But I'm a bit burnt out on that one. So how about we get to the next one? Sure. Sounds good. Unless you can think of more to describe this one. And no, I don't have the next topic bumper. Or I might, but I'm too lazy to find it. <laughs> so let's get to this one from Sun News, as the other one was from Daily Caller. In case anyone wonders. Alright, so this next topic here is and so in the past Rob Ford has received criticism for being homophobic and I think some of it might be even to do with um while not being sober calling I think it was Justin Trudeau the six letter F word which also has a definition of bundle of sticks. But, so what's gone on here, and I guess this is sort of old news, last month's stuff, but um, he sits down during a World Pride standing ovation. So this um, guest speaker from, I think it was... Yeah, it was World Pride, and one of the officials was just done their speech, and he clapped briefly, just for a little bit, but he did not stand nor applaud with the other counselors in salutation to the World Pride officials. And so, he's getting, um, attention from the social media and everywhere that he's homophobic. And something that I don't really get myself to is, um, because even in here there's stuff about the Pride Parade, which he's refuse to do and I myself I I personally wouldn't do it because I don't know I I just don't really get why they do the pride parade exactly I feel like that's something that needs explained to me <laughs> in order for me to understand it fully well but all that I've been able to really see it as is a promo is to promote that 
um, the LGBT community isn't a bad thing or whatever, and what what are your thoughts on this before I lose my train of thought? Well, I'm the kind of person who wants everybody to be treated equally as any other person, whether whether you're lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transsexual. I just want everybody to treat everyone with the same amount of respect and, you know, just just come together and be equal. But um, Rob Ford, when I first read this, my impressions were is that he probably doesn't have any respect for these kind of people. The fact that you don't actually stand up and applaud during a standing ovation shows lack of respect. It just does. And even if you, th even, well, I haven't actually been in these kinds of parades before, but I would gladly volunteer if I had the chance, but I have more important things that I need to be worrying about because, it, let's be honest, I'm not going to be able to attend every single pride parade that comes through in every single area of this entire country because it's I haven't gotten there yet but the fact that he says that he's not homophobic is actually questionable if you don't stand and and applaud when everybody else is it's a sign of disrespect and sometimes um, I'm going back last year um, the one of the leaders of the Westboro Baptist Church ended up passing away and a few of his dying words saying that he was actually uh, he was actually stri uh, he wasn't he was actually gay and that was before he actually passed away so he made an entire group that focused on just hating like all of you know gay people and such like that when he was gay himself so it's kind of like everyone's being ignorant and whether I'm not I'm not sure what Rob Ford's sexual preference is but if he is gay oh, he's he married doesn't... to a mo to a woman but okay okay so that makes sense so obviously well thank you for clearing that up because I have no idea who Rob Ford is but he's the, the fact Toronto that he... mayor he's the Toronto mayor I just think that he lacks respect for for the people who participated in this parade and for the people who actually stand and give standing ovations. That's that's just how I see it. All right. I got to say wish... I'm, I'm my mind is a, quite a bit blown hearing you say what you said about the guy who started Westboro. Because when I saw this one video, I forget who, what the channel is. I'll probably put it in the show notes if I remember to. But they had this parody video of him where he was with a... Um, and of course, this is all just acting and stuff. But anyway, aside from that, where he was with another guy and a whole bunch of stuff. Nothing explicit. But, I, th I thought that was all just making fun of it. And then when you said that, I'm just thinking, so this is like another version of, for say, Harry Potter's Voldemort. He was, hims he was himself a mudblood, pardon the term for Harry Potter fans out That's there. That's racist in the Harry Potter universe. <laughs> but um, he himself was born with Muggle parents, and yet he is part of a whole movement to despise people born of Muggle parents who are magical, or... Um, Hitler, who was apparently, 
who I guess, I'm not sure whether it was you who said it or who told me it, but that he himself was a Jew and was going against the Jews and let alone he also killed many Jews in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Which, that, that just totally blows my mind that we have another one of those hypocrites mm -hmm. that claims they're, well not claims, but they are being hateful to a group that they themselves are a part of. Right. But when it comes to this, in the first place, I get annoyed by criticisms of Rob Ford. Like in the first place, there was the whole criticism of him smoking crack. Which, of course, it's not the best thing to have your mayor smoking crack, but yet he did his job well. And all the money that was going towards his crack was his own. Whether it was all his personal money, which I doubt, but it wasn't the city's money that he was spending on his drugs. And then... Just this whole thing here, I definitely gotta agree with that it is a bit disrespectful to to not show, to not ovate, if that's the right word for it, for a speaker, but then again, even with the whole pride, pride parade thing again, I'm I'm not gonna get myself into something I don't understand. And the way I see it is and I hope I don't offend anyone here, but that's it's just me. I feel like the the one of the main reasons I'm not against homosexuality is it's their what well, uh gay people or whatever is it's their life not mine I'll live my life as a straight person and I don't mind if they're going and of course it's a part of who they are so I can't really do anything about that I can't take that away from them cuz it's a part of who they are it's like you can't take User entered your channel. turrets away from me, even though sometimes, like I've mentioned before, User left your channel. I wish I could get rid of it, but I can't because it's part of how I am programmed. But <laughs> <laughs> programmed like your robot. Exactly. It's, it's like with me. I thought Asperger's syndrome was a curse upon <laughs> when I was a little kid, but as I grew up and I learned a lot about myself and the things I love to do and the people I like to hang around with. I mean, I wish I could just make Asperger's syndrome go away, but it's it it's a thing that's part of me that makes me who I am and I have to live with that and if anybody can't live with that, then just don't hang around with me. And getting back to the whole thing with pride parades and all that, my my, the way my mother puts it, too, is that whatever they do in their bedroom isn't her business. As with me, whatever someone else does in their bedroom, I don't freaking want to know about. <laughs> Especially if it's sexual intercourse, leave me out of that. Awkward. <laughs> but, and then of course, there's... I, I'm wondering if the whole thing with coming out is because there's a common thing, or maybe even maybe it's even just a stereotype that every everyone assumes that everyone else is straight unless they put somewhere that they are gay. Yeah, there's been actually a trend. There are a lot of there are a lot of people that have actually admitted that they were gay. For example, the, the the basketball player, he 
recently announced that, well, it was probably last year, but he announced that that he was gay, and then I think a few to several months later, Ellen Page ended oh, yeah, up yeah, yeah. admitting it too, that she's a lesbian, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. When you assume, it's just you can't assume because you have no idea what their life is like unless you walk in their shoes. You don't know where they've been, who they've talked to, who they're with, how their life went, unless you were in their exact shoes. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of pride parades, I I'm just... I think what really just confuses me is what really is the purpose of it, maybe? Is it just to say that um, we're not bad people, or it's not a bad thing to be um, LGBT, or maybe even just who you are? or what it is, but I, th there's just something to it that I don't really get, and personally, again, I wouldn't really get myself involved in it, or at least not until I fully understand what it's about, but in any case, I might as well just say it. I'm not. I, I just don't know what the point is exactly. And I'm trying to not sound. Uh, I'm trying to sound as barely like a jerk about this, but I just don't understand it. And I think if. I carry on on this, I'm going to say that a million times in a row. <laughs> yep, there are just there are some things that people will never get within the rest of their entire lifetime. People, other people will get it, but you have those who just don't understand the point of something, but you're trying to do your best to respect people as they are, respect yourself, respect others, but sometimes you just don't understand. And that's the other thing, too. I fully respect these people myself the way my judgment goes of people is just if they're kind or if they're jerks those are the only two things I care about in a person well one or two things I'm not sure what quantity value quantitational value I should go for here but and I'm not necessarily sure I would say that that um, some of these accusations are really correct, really. Because of course the not being involved with the ovation is definitely in a way not polite, because of course that's just what you do, but... Then again, I'm also finding that the labels, ju just the labels against them, are very, basically just laying out something, and then, oh, he's this or that. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes when there are things that, when people are actually proud to be different than the whole typical, oh, I'm straight, so I marry opposite genders and they see the actions of one person that they think is important not do something then they just lash out like whatever the first thing comes to mind like for example when somebody says what color is the sky most people would immediately respond saying blue without even thinking about it but there are those who actually take the time to think about the question and consider the possibilities and ask other more interesting questions like, why is the sky blue? Where did the sky come from? You know, it's just one of those things where you have to stop and think for a few seconds instead of just seeing the one thing.
And mm -hmm. I think that's what happened is that the majority of people who recognize the LGBT community and their pride parades and the people who actually know the the mayor, they just automatically just jump to that conclusion without thinking. Now, of course, not everybody thinks before they act. I'm sure there are some people who think before they act, but I, I'm going to I'm going to go with my gut and say I think the majority of people just automatically think the negative rather than the positive. It's like, "Oh, he didn't stand. That means he doesn't respect the LGBT community." The question is, why didn't he stand? What was he feeling or doing at the time when the standing ovation was happening? You know what? I I think that is the better question. And just just like our first topic here, why what what is their issue with the white zoning land? What is what why didn't Rob Ford do the standing ovation? Heaven knows why. <laughs> yeah, they just automatically and, call him homophobic for not standing, but and, but why didn't he stand? That's the question. Mm-hmm. And then again, of course, why should he have to stand? Maybe the is there something that he didn't agree with? Because even some people... S some things I have an issue with, because there will be some things I agree with. And then there will be the things I'm thinking, no, that is not right. And... And that, that's sort of the thing with um, the... Or at least my school's GSA. I... I agree with promoting that the um that the LBG, LGBT community is not anything vile or anything, but I do, however, disagree with using stereotypes that um of other communities that are stereotyping the LGBTs as and using that against them. Basically, I, and, and then the other thing too is the whole term allies to describe those who basically are supportive of the LGBT. I feel like there should be a better term for that than allies, because even just that word makes me think of World War Two, and when of course it could almost seem like in a war, like a war in a way between homophobia and homosexuality, because one doesn't like the other, and that that's why there can't be world peace, because there are always going to be the opposing groups. Because someone's going to have an opposing view or traditional view that they just can't let go of. Whether it's right or wrong. And especially worse when it's incorrect. But I guess let's get to the next topic. Possibly. You still there? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> my mic was muted. So it says that he has had a rocky relationship with the city's lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community since he came to office. And it says he has repeatedly refused to march in the city's pride parade. So here's another question. If you've had a rocky relationship with the LGBT community since he swept into office... Being put under that pressure, why would you even consider into giving in to that pressure and going on the pride parade? Think about it. I mean, if you've been doing this for a long time and you've had a rocky relationship with a certain community that just didn't make you feel comfortable doing something, then why would you march in the pride parade? And Maybe that's, that's why he didn't stand up. It's because just since he went into office, the relationship with the with the community hasn't been 
like fully accepted and maybe he just can't stand the pressure that that community is putting in on him meaning that maybe he's trying to avoid it while some people think that he might actually be disrespecting them it's it's a whole like sometimes convoluted like puzzle that you're trying to solve but you just don't always have the right pieces and um Crap, I had a train of thought. Oh, and then, then that's the other thing, too, that um, had come up about the um, controversy between him and the LGBT is when um, they um, had the whole thing about gay rights in Raja and all that when he did not want the rainbow flag up when, or at least the way I see the flag, is that it just represents the LGBT, when the flag that he wanted up was the Canadian flag, which represents all of Canada. Hmm. Interesting. So he would, he would rather focus on, like, the whole entire structure of the, of the continent and all the people within it, as opposed to to a group that is specifically in the country. So he looks at it as a whole rather than looking at it specifically to just one group. But that could be. Yeah, maybe he could be well a well-rounded person, but he just feels pressured when and due to the I whole rocky relationship. That's, that's what I was going to come up with too. What we I mean, not come up with, bring up, is that... I think just some of this stuff is just um, if you do something that some people don't agree with, basically the thought that, well, you can't be like this. And at my school, there's, um, of course, the whole attitude towards the negative attitude towards gays isn't good, but um, just just trying to force it upon them, basically, and yeah. shove it all in their face that, oh, being homophobic is bad. That's not the right way to go with things. Myself, um, I... I personally don't understand the pride parades, but the thing is, if someone can educate me on what the point is to it, then I'd love to know. But not everyone cares to know. Mm -hmm. And forcing it upon that person, that just a complete violation against that person, not to mention of their constitutional right. Yeah, it's against their free will. You can't mm -hmm. force somebody to do something because that would be messing with their free will. If somebody is entitled to what they stand for, and no, and matter, you're to... no matter how illogical it is of yeah. what they stand for. But anyway. Alright, next one. So this next one is something that a lot of people have not really liked, and originally I didn't really have a problem with it. Although the only thing I sort of hoped wouldn't happen is that YouTube has copyright issues because for some reason they, or at least the way I see it, I feel like I'm saying the way I see it a lot here, but that's just me. But, again, the way I see it, YouTube just seems to take the side of the copyright buggers more than they do the people who they actually get their revenue from, being the YouTube creators, and that's what I, that's the only thing I was iffy about with Google slash YouTube buying Twitch for one billion dollars. Next thing we know, 
that's exactly one of the things that happens is now they have a, a new system that's like Content ID that will scan VOD videos on a person's Twitch channel and VOD being just all their previous streams that they have stored on their Twitch and it will go through and scan for any music and it won't take it down or anything um, and I guess of course no money would be lost in the first place but what happens is the tidbits it finds of unlicensed music or music you don't have the rights to it'll mute it and give you a notification that um, the streamer doesn't have the sufficient rights to the music and that's why this is being muted and s someone brought up that it's a good thing that that workers party which is the YouTube and podcasting group I've brought up a ton in this podcast and probably also in Blazy Logs too with that they record all their streams to their own hard drives and so they don't rely on Twitch for to store all the all their video recordings but again this this won't involve the live stuff this is just that this is what's being recorded live but is now just on demand and it's received quite a bit of backlash and what well, what do you think I hate having to ask that question I just love for you to just jump in and interrupt me yeah well I like listening to people as they talk and I don't tend to interrupt them unless I have something that is very important to say and I tend to talk a lot in a short amount of breath but here are my thoughts. So it says that it will mute the audio on any video on demand thing on Twitch for 30 minutes. To me, I think 30 minutes is too much of a long time. 30 minutes? 30 minutes, yes. That's I... how long it mutes if it hears any copyrighted music on saved videos and here's another Frick, thing I did not read that part here's another thing so somebody was streaming Dota 2 on Twitch and apparently the content ID system identified the Dota 2 music in it and it blocked out half an hour of footage with Dota 2 music when clearly Valve allows you to monetize off of their content, which doesn't really make any sense because <laughs> – and if you look at the article, uh, down, down um, it's by the Brett at DFM2014. Good job. And not only that, but it says that a person on Twitter who was singing the song Summer Breeze was close enough for music – to music for it to get to get muted on Twitch. Now we all know that the previous content ID system on YouTube was not perfect. It was falsifying all sorts of content ID. An example was there was somebody who uploaded a music video who ended up using uh, Toby Turner's intro when he does his Tobuscus uh, videos on YouTube and caused him to have a copyright strike on his account because of the content ID system. There was also a very interesting one. Toby Turner I had has a copyright strike? Well, he did, but it's long gone now. That was last oh. year. And the one for me was actually really interesting. So I don't know if you watch my YouTube, but it's called uh, SC God. So it's pretty simple. Splinter Cell God without the Splinter Cell, just SC. And I uploaded four videos, I know I'll probably get back to it, but of Splinter Cell Blacklist. And I actually got 
a third party copyright notice saying that a certain like visual display in a game was actually owned by somebody. Now, this lasted a couple of months, and I was trying to figure out where this material belonged to. So I looked at the copyright notification. It wasn't a strike. It was just a third-party copyright match. And I tried to look it up, and there wasn't a single thing that I could find that was related to the thing that was posted in the game. But after a couple of months, I checked my, my videos of all of the third-party content, and apparently there were no third-party content identifiers on my Splinter Cell Blacklist videos. So what I think they did was I think the Content ID system was screwed up. YouTube knew that was a problem, and it probably fixed all of those weird um, misplaced um, copyright notifications. And that, that's so, actually, sorry to interrupt you, but that's actually something that's sure. driven um, Angry Joe Show not nuts, but mad because he had right. a video up of him going through all his videos. Well, not all his videos, but he had 50 videos. Yeah. Because of course he does reviews and everything on games, and he had 50 or more videos flagged by Content ID, which he yeah. had all the rights to, although I guess some. He didn't win the copyright battle to which he said in the video he's no longer getting music from them because they decided, they disregarded that he had full rights to their content to use in his videos. And lucky me, I've only had one video flagged by the content ID system, which is um, the Banquo song parody of Sloprano, which ha if any of you have played Conker's Bad Fur Day, it's a parody I love that. Of game. that. I I've love it. tried it it's hilarious. It, and yeah, it's it's awesome. It's I, I wonder if that's an inspiration to Happy Tree Friends actually. Cuz originally Rare was going to make Bad Fur Day a kid-friendly game, which th there's actually the announced version of the kid-friendly game somewhere, which I forget where it was, but you can easily find it. And they decided that they were going to make it darker or whatever. <laughs> and ends up, they went full on that, and you get... And spoiler alert, but a mouse explodes after eating too much cheese thanks to Conker. And you can see a few or so guts coming out of him. And that's kind of like what you get with Happy Tree Friends. It's Looney Tunes meets today's crappy insulting children's cartoons. And why I call it insulting is I'm wondering, what? child, or at least back in my day, I would not watch that crap. And I, I, I remember going into a video game rental store called Video King, and I remember seeing Conker's Bad Fur Day on the shelf. There was those, there were those, uh, those stickers where it says, like, like rated 18 for adults, and I would just, I would just stare at that all day, but... <laughs> Never got to it. The whole the place actually closed down. I never got my chance to play it, but I still have an N sixty four that works, so I could get a uh, um a hold of one somehow. I just use an emulator. I I forget which one it is. I use. I th actually I think it's Project sixty four that I use to emulate the game. But yeah. Cause and back to the video. Um, what was found was, of course, the instrumental, because I didn't make original instrumental, because I'm lazy. And, honestly, I don't really give a care, but I just put it as that it's a cover, so I'd still get the revenue from it. 
and all, but so far that's the only troubles I've had with the content ID. But when you're mentioning that it's 30 minutes just because of a song, that's going way over. Yeah, it's too much. That's way too much. Half an hour is pretty much enough to fit. I don't know, how average are the songs? Three to four minutes, maybe? Yeah. Like four, that, to, four to five minutes. That's at least, probably ten times? At least 25 to 30 songs in that amount of time. It's crazy. Or... Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm uh, doing I, I math right. I think someone would have to actually have a playlist of 25 songs to make it worth being muted out. <laughs> yeah. Just, just he had some ad lib in there, yeah. if that's the right term for it. I'm coming up with so many terms to describe stuff that I doubt I'm even correct with calling it such. But. Even the content ID system, you still hear the music, but the revenue is being split. Which of course isn't a good thing, especially if that person has the rights to it. And yeah. in the first place it, or at least it was claimed to have been done, especially to get rid of that some people are uploading full movies to YouTube, quote from Angry Joe and his What the Freak YouTube video, and of course that's not actually Freak. I know. You know me, I my know. euphemisms. Let, let's get to the fourth topic, and may, maybe final topic, because I'm not even so sure. Do, do you want to talk about the Snowden thing? Because I don't really... The The what? The Snowden topic about... Oh. Uh, well, yeah, well, he, Edward Snowden did a lot exposing phone records, etc. And now that he is wanted by the United States and he's in, now in Russia, I really think that the Courage campaign is doing something positive. Despite all of the charges that are put against Edward Snowden for doing something that is kind of like, um, I'm going to say, like he's, he's, he's one of a kind. He's, he's a gray hat hacker. He does stuff to expose things to people. Um, well, wow. I'm, not, I'm not even sure if he was hacking, but just that he had the access, so... Yeah, he had the access. And I like how that the WikiLeaks founder, a British com comedian, actor, and author, um, con Courage Advisory Board members, a writer, and an MVP are actually supporting this guy. Yeah, so, unfortunately, apparently, Bill Gates doesn't, because he said he that he wouldn't get much admiration out of him, but... Oh, well. There's plenty of people that admire Edward Snowden. I'm one of them, actually. I'm pro, I'm pro Snowden. I'm pro Snowden and pro abolish and destroy, if not, maybe mini nuke the NSA. And by mini nuke, I mean just enough to just blow up them. No one else yeah, surrounding them. <laughs> Let let everybody's families know that there's going to be a huge disaster. And they said, "What I need you to do is get to a fallout shelter now, yes. and then and then say say goodbye to your you know your loved ones." Okay, that's that's depressing. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, that's that's what the that's what Mr. Brunt said on Thursday's The Shaft podcast because I had a listener contribution bumper that was um basically two hosts down and three new ones and Mr. Brandt I guess and, and I, I suspected this of the previous bump I had sent in which was the shaft is now without Eric and Wes the shaft is now without Eric and Wes and so on and um 
He said the reason why he pretty much didn't want that in was because it didn't set a very positive tune to it, and of course he had a good giggle about it, and th that's what I thought was the reason. I guess I was right. <laughs> yeah. Because I was thinking, you know what, he probably left it out because it's maybe not so positive to some people. <laughs> and next thing I know, it's not. <laughs> And it gave Mr. Yeah. West a good laugh. Although I'm sure you yeah. probably don't have a clue who I'm talking about, but... I don't. <laughs> you, you need to watch the Dead Workers Party. But... that That's how I feel about the NSA. They're nothing but legalized pedophiles. And... That's, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, that and that's partly why I despise the U.S. government and Obama. Because... They allow their operations, which America. my my brother, my oldest brother, brought up with that it's their fault. But then again, of course, it's also the NSA's fault for um, taking the fact that they're allowed and pursuing it. But. <laughs> I guess get to this other topic. Maybe I'll maybe I will keep that and I'm not sure now, but that was a pretty good converse conversation. And yeah. to this last one, which I believe the main reason why I really wanted this in was because I've had a thing on Facebook and Twitter of bashing the MDA. Those who do not know who they are they are moms demand action for gun sense in whoops gun sense is supposed to be all one word America so that's actually seven words uh, for their whole name which is basically this mother I guess had enough of the news after the Sandy Hook shooting and decided that she wanted a safer environment for her child well, for her children or whatever. And so, let's make this whole anti-gun campaign. And that they've, they've made it popular on their Facebook page. And actually, I suppose I should explain why I'm big on Facebook and Twitter with them. It's because I'd make comments that this is incorrect. Or make basically I laugh at you on Twitter, and <laughs> I I hate to say that I did click their like button on Facebook, which it worked, which I'm quite surprised. Not sure if the follow button worked though, but I can no longer comment on their Facebook page, and then on. Their Twitter, I cannot follow them because they blocked me, which just made me laugh my head off. But the reason why I included this article is because in a lot of their posters, there's stuff about basically that kids should not have access to guns at all. And they've <laughs> even made complaints to stores or whatever about um, open carry being a bad thing and I also want to bring that up because while I completely disagree with that open carry is a bad thing in the way they're putting it I feel like they're calling people who open carry in stores like Target or whatever I feel like they're calling them insane. I feel like that is what they are labeling open carriers of firearms is insane. Because that is what they fear, or they claim they fear, they are going to do to someone is what an insane person would do. And in the first place, even, even using shootings as a backup for false logic 
<laughs> that's that's disrespectful. That for more emphasis is disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Which is honestly also what I find gun control and the whole promotion of gun control. It's disrespectful. At least the way so many people have been doing it. Other than Stephen King. Uh, other than the part of one of the only reasons for semi or fully autos is for people to get H O R N Y off of them. Which I, I like the way you put it. <laughs> but it's definitely not the only reasons people use firearms. Yeah. Which I I honestly recommend people to read his essay guns. Unfortunately he is for gun control. And ironically, he has um, handguns himself, and yet he's, and yet um, people who pay for his essay on Kindle, I mean, Amazon or whatever, the Kindle single, that money goes to towards the Brady campaign against gun violence or something like that, which is basically focused on handgun gun control, which I find kind of weird, but alright. Mm -hmm. And, um, I admire Stephen King as an author, mm -hmm. and I admire, he, he wrote his essay very, very well. And as much as I knew what he was saying was bullcrap, I'm sorry Stephen King, but when it comes to the gun control thing, you're not correct. You really are not. And I can come up with more reasons as to why, or purposes to semi-autos and fully autos, than I guess you can other than for murder and getting happy-go-lucky off of shooting some bullets here and there. But it's well written, but anyway. And so what this is, a, is about is basically it's just showing off some families, or at least some kids who have been raised to use well, not to use, but who have been raised in gun-loving families. Not my family is a gun-loving family. I think you said your family is a gun-loving family, or at least you implied it, because I don't think you actually said it. I think they are. I mean, I haven't, I haven't asked, uh, asked them, but yeah, if you do whatever you to protect yourself, and I'm a person who I believe is responsible enough to you know, carry a gun concealed in order to protect myself in case I have to in emergency situations. And that that's the other thing too, with the whole defense thing and open carry. And my, my I feel like I said this once before, but my brother pointed out to me and my my middle brother, because I have three brothers, and my middle brother pointed out that for example, in the case of the Colorado theater shooting, if open carry was allowed, which I guess on also ironically, it's one of the states. Colorado is a state, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it legalized recreational marijuana. Of course, it's a real state. Okay. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Just making sure. But um, with that, they are one of the states that don't allow open carry. And yet, if they did allow open carry, someone could have shot the bugger who shot up how many people in the theater during the Dark Knight Rises. That's one of the helpful things of open carry, is in case some insane git invades a public area and 
appears to be out to kill someone, well, may maybe maybe not so much of kill them before they kill someone else, but just shoot them in the foot. <laughs> or the leg. Or that. Even better yet, yes, the leg. That way they might at least be on the ground or just can't walk that easily and you have a better chance of getting them nailed. And by that I mean having the authority on call. Neutralized. Yeah. That's the better term. Neutralized. It's funny because I'm starting up a new brand name thing for my channel which sounds like military stuff in a way called Blaze Corpse which is my duo series which yeah, with one of my friends, Kate Corbeard. But anyway, aside from that, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's actually amazing. I'm looking at the Wikipedia of the Aurora shooting, and it said that it happened in a span of seven minutes. Seven minutes. Twelve people died, and seventy people total were injured in seven minutes. And heck, if someone it's injured, crazy. if someone injured him, you could have stopped some lives from being ruined like that, and he could have helped the Dark Knight Rises screening be flipping awesome for a lot of people. But yet, no, open carry is not allowed, so it's a bit harder to get this guy down but I, I thought I'd just bring this article up it was very neat and myself I've I've shot firearms since at least I think eight or nine maybe I think probably about eight cool and here's my final question Kids who are born in families that love guns, obviously children are probably going to get curious. And, you know, they might take the whole gun training thing to heart. But the thing is, is that accidents happen. And, like, I don't know if you've read it, but the first, I think it mentioned that somebody, that one of the kids ended up shooting themselves in the head by accident because of the way that, they accidentally let the trigger pull, but this whole gun thing, it's its its more than just, like, the massacres. It's, it's, it's how you handle it. Like, there are going to be people out there who are an anti-gun lobbyist who just come up with these stupid, ignorant terms, like, Gun a like, assault weapon as opposed oh, okay. to assault rifle which is a rifle that fires more than three times every you hold the trigger and you pull it and it shoots all the bullets out that's something they, that bothers me is some people refer to firearms as weapons if firearms are just a weapon then everything's just a weapon because he can use anything to commit physical harm, but back to you. Uh, like they they used it, AR-15. Some anti-gun lobbyists think that AR means assault rifle when it does not. It technically it stands for arm like rifle. Augmented reality. <laughs> Deus ex. <laughs> But anyway, what, you have you all these again? people who are... What? I, I talked over you when you said what AR stood for. Arma Light Rifle. That's what it means. Okay, because I talked also, over you and said augmented reality. <laughs> no. And then you're going to have the... Again, people who are against guns. They look at a semi-automatic 22 with a folding stock, a grip and a flash hider, they're automatically going to think it looks like an assault weapon. When re 
in reality, they are only cosmetic features that pretty much like make the the gun shoot better, better to handle, and without blinding your face. And that's what upsets me about most of those people is that they automatically classify those as quote-unquote assault weapons rather than semi-automatic rifles or armor light rifles with cosmetic features. I just don't get people. They don't do anything to make an excuse over all these massacres and such as. And I'm saying, you know what? Stuff like this happens around all the time. The thing, the only thing that we can really do is to find something that works and continue along that path. But there are going to be those people who don't think twice about what they're saying or doing against all of these these gun laws. And to think that somebody believes that a background check will stop criminals from getting guns is an absolute pathetic excuse. Because, as we all know, criminals do not follow the law. Thank you very that's, much. That's the problem with gun registry is a criminal yeah. is not going to register their gun. No. But that just means th it's easier for them to get caught. Right. But I think, I think here is the delusional world that anti-gun lobbyists picture. So let's say that you find a reasonable person who, who has had lots of training, knows at least four individuals that they've grown up with four years with, and they know how to respect people and handle guns. So they file for a background check, and they get a gun, and they get a gun safe, and they put the safe in there. I think what people are worried is that this person may have some sort of disability that will cause them to get the thing that they registered and harm somebody. I think that's what they're trying to get the message, but the way that they implement all of these these gun laws, it's just not going to work. People kill people. Guns don't kill people. And the, the other thing, too, is the gun lobbyists are picking out all these tragic events that involve guns. What about all the other ones where someone's being beaten to death or beaten with a bat, etc.? Yeah, because most of the time people don't like to really focus on those things because they're not, they don't have a more powerful impact. And I read the article and it says, uh, Dan Gross, president of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, says, told Los Angeles Times there are 86 people who die from bullets on an average day. And he also argues that many cases of gun deaths go unreported and says that about 2,000 teens and young children commit suicide with guns at home. So it's actually true that sometimes... Mo these like these really small things aren't focused on because they don't make big news because it's not it's not negative or pessimistic enough in the world to get people's attention and we need more good news in the world and you know where you can find more good news on YouTube there are so many things on YouTube that you can learn just by watching a video and all of the inspiring things that people teach like uh, Shay Carl learn something every day. Those are a couple of channels to give an example, and it's just so inspiring. Just gotta you gotta be optimistic about things. You can't always focus on the bad stuff, otherwise it could impact your your mentality and, well, I'm and your on emotions. That part. <laughs> but... Thank you for sharing, <laughs> but... <laughs> Mr. Pessimist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's all right. I know it myself. But then again, there's also all these events. And this is my last thought. And hopefully, you don't have any more thoughts because I want to get this wrapped up. Yeah. Because it's getting late and my bandwidth is going a bit high tonight. But just get it in. I think what's really ignored more is. 
the instances that don't involve firearms, because of course that's what the media wants to have, because that's what people will tune in for, is this stuff about gun violence, as opposed to bat violence, melee, well, hand-in-hand -hand violence, etc. But, anyway, you are about ready to wrap up? I sure am. Alright, so... Rather than just talk about all my referral links, I'm just gonna say you can check them all out in the show notes. However, I will say that there is Amazon Backblaze Media Temple, which maybe I will talk just a tiny bit about that one. Um, currently, you if you use my link, you can get yourself a domain for $2.30 and that will go towards and using my link will support my projects that I do and then the other link being my engine which you can get a site with engine and if you get a plan then yeah it supports and just like the rest it supports the show um bitly slash ender dash radio that's my Minecraft Music Radio is still up, however it has not been updated four months since I think about February or so, no March, March or April or whatever, as I, I haven't been able to afford to keep up with the current plan and I'm not sure what um, downgrading to a free plan would do, but that would give me absolutely no space at all if anything so if you could please check that out and and of course ff split check them out dot com and yeah anything you got um well um i guess the only thing i can really say is that you are who you choose to be, and that's 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 pretty much it. All just right. my final, just my final words. All right, and as soon as this gets to YouTube and Stitcher, please, if you could, um, leave some comments about what you think of um, what we're talking about leave some reviews on Stitcher, it'll really help the show out, and, yeah, and, yeah, oh, and, in case this isn't part of the outro yet, twitch.tv slash jbjblaze is where you can catch the show live, patreon.com slash jbjblaze, I plan on changing up my page a bit, possibly, but I'm not exactly sure yet. Basically, so that it might only deal with my Ender Radio, or actually, no, my music <laughs> project or something. Um, you can follow the show at Blaze on Nation on Twitter, me at JBJ Blaze, and where can they follow you? Where can they follow you? You can follow me at the thing, no A, and I. At the thing 2010, the number 2010, on Twitter. And if you want to check out my YouTube channel, uh, SC God, pretty simple. I also upload another channel with playthroughs of me playing with my brother called Palka Brothers, P-A-L-K-A, and then the word Brothers. You can see some footage on that. I'm probably going to upload some more later this week. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, wait. Um, oh, wait. Z Zio Thermike has a question about Switcher. Oh. Oh. I said Stitcher. Oh, not Stitcher. Switcher. Okay. <laughs>
Thanks for beating <laughs> me to it. All right, so let's get this thing done. And All right. bye bye. Thanks bye. for tuning in. And. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonnation.tk for more articles and show notes, to flippinawesome.engine.com slash bnp for show notes, and check out the show on Stitcher at bit.ly slash bnpstitcher. Have a good night, everybody!